Some great quality. You know, you go to the fish store sometimes and you smell fish all around and you say, ooh, it stinks in here. Don't buy the fish there. <laughs> if it stinks, don't buy it. Okay. Either they're not cleaning up well or the fish is old. And either way, I don't want to eat a pla food out of a place that stinks or it's old fish. So I won't buy fish from a stinking fish place. What do you think about, as a, you know, buying a whole fish as opposed to a fillet fish? Well, I usually buy a whole fish because I can tell a lot about a whole fish. When you buy a whole fish, you can look at it and see how, how fresh it is, kind of. If you look at the eyes here, see these eyes? They're pretty. They're looking back at me. Sometimes when you go to buy a fish, it looks like the fish was drunk the night before. Cloudy eyes, bloodshot. The fish doesn't drink. So the, <laughs> eyes, the eyes are cloudy and all bloodshot. Something's wrong with that fish. It's an old fish. Don't buy old fish. When you open up the fish inside, you should be able to see blood if it's whole fish. They were bleeding, they were alive earlier, and if it doesn't have blood in it, they didn't wash all the blood away real quick. It had to soak to get that blood out. I don't like to see fish without a little bit of fresh blood in it because that tells me it's fresh. Another way is I'm a living creature. And if you press on sometimes. my arm, well, sometimes. <laughs> but when you press on my arm like this, I bounce back. When I press on the flesh here, it's supposed to bounce back. If you put your finger in it and it leaves a hole in it, there's something wrong with that fish. It's either been frozen, it's waterlogged, it's or tired. It's old, it's tired. Don't buy tired fish. Good fish should be bouncing right back. See, it's flexible. Should have good clear eyes. And if you look at the gills, look how clean these gills look. It's just been swimming. Nice in and water. bright. Nice, nice and, bright. and bright. It's not necessarily nice and red. Now understand, sometimes fish have to be shipped. They have to be shipped and they're a week old. A week old fish is still very, very fresh if it's salmon, the way they store it. We have great refrigeration, we take good care of fish anymore. But when fish doesn't bounce back, it's old, tired, dead fish. Don't buy it. Alright, so this is a good fish, right? This is a good fish. So what are you going to do with it? I'm going to do something that's unique. Something that's unique to Jack's Firehouse, which is in Philadelphia. I'm going to hot smoke it. I want a smoky flavor all through. When I grew up, I used to go trout fishing. When, I was, you, when you grew up or when you grew up? Well, I'm never going to mature. I'm, a, I'm already grown up, though. <laughs> but we used to go trout fishing. And we used to sit and catch trout all over the place. Right. And we didn't have any place to take them cook them, couldn't pan for them. So we'd take a stick and stick inside them, from one end to the other, instead of a backbone. And we'd put it on a, on a little, we'd build a little tripod out of twigs and put it over, put it over a fire, and we'd turn it, and we'd turn it. And that was the best trout. It was knee weakening. It'd make your knees shake. It was so good. I mean, when he's thinking of it, it was really great fish. And I went to all these fancy restaurants all over the country, all over the, all over this country, the most expensive ones, and I could never get a wonderful fish like that. I could never get that 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 hickory smoke coming out. So I tried and I played and I tried and I played, and finally I figured out how to do it. You gotta hot smoke them. That's what I was doing. I didn't know that was hot smoking. So what I did was I decided to go ahead and do it this way. I've been putting a dry rub on it, and in this dry rub I have some paprika, some cumin, some salt, some onions. You got a little garlic that you'll give me, Bobby? Some okay. black peppercorns? I'm gonna mix it all together. With some roasted garlic? Oh, a little roasted garlic in it. We'll mix it in. I'll mix this in. Now, a lot of people like to use whole fish when they cook. Do you know why they like to use whole fish? No. Well. It actually helps keep some moisture in it. If you keep the head on and tail on, that way it doesn't, the moisture doesn't go outside. But I'm gonna show you another way of do, keeping the moisture in. I'm gonna put a little rub on the inside, and then I'm gonna put some rub on the outside of this fish, and this is actually gonna give it some flavor. And I'm gonna take, mm, look, I'm stabbing. <laughs> I want that, that to go in, we better be careful. I'm getting some flavor through it. Same thing on, on, on the next side? Same thing on the other side, okay? And that will also let the smoke penetrate. The smoke will go in, and I'm gonna cut the tail off, Bobby, and I'm gonna cut the head off. Hopefully I can do this easy. You gonna use this? I'm gonna use that. All right. That is a new piece of equipment. Since I, I'm now can afford to, to use better equipment, and we have better equipment to use in the city than we do in the country. You taking the head off? Taking the head off. See, I would've left the head on. Yeah, that's because you want moisture in it, right. <laughs> uh, I think I, it looks better. You like the head on. Yeah. Some people don't. I find some of my customers don't like to see it. What are you dipping that? What is I'm that? I'm dipping this in flour. Okay. You know what that's going to do? 
What? That's gonna sit. That's gonna sit. Uh, that's gonna seal the outside so the moisture doesn't go away. Now, one reason I took the head off is my new contraption here. I can lay it right in. See? This is great. This is great. And this is like, is it uh, like Teflon? It's Teflon. It doesn't stick. You don't have to use oil on it. And now I can put this in my smoker. And what I did was I used a, sm I didn't use an old traditional smoker. I used a grill. This is a dome-shaped grill. So the air comes in the bottom. When the air comes in the bottom, it comes up top. You can do anything with this grill. This is a great grill. This is a great design. And I'm going to slip my fish on now. And we're going to start sm barely smoking. I'm going to add some chips to it, some more chips. I'm going to get a smoke going. And as this, the chips set here on top of some charcoal, I'm going to get a smoke flavor coming all the way through the fish. It's going to permeate the fish. It's going to be a wonderfully flavored fish. And I've already started one since I knew that I was going to talk too much today. All right, Jack, while, while you're doing that, I'm going to make a, a mustard vinaigrette for you. OK. How's that sound? That sounds great. Take some chopped, some chopped uh, white onions, put them in a blender. Blenders are great to use to make vinaigrettes because they, uh, they help emulsify or uh, sort of uh, bring, bring the oil and the vinegar together. Because as you know, when you're making uh, a vinaigrette, usually, usually it's separated. But we want this one to be emulsified. So the blender is going to allow the air to kind of whip right through it and make it nice and uh, great consistency. I'm going to roll some limes, get the juice out. I'm going to squeeze the limes right into the blender. <laughs> Then I'm going to use some Dijon mustard. If you don't have Dijon, you can use whole grain mustard or, you know, any kind of mustard. The mustard that you like the best, I would say. Yes. But I'm going to use some Dijon because I think it has the most flavor. A little balsamic vinegar for some acidity. So you have the lime juice and the balsamic vinegar. And a little roasted garlic. How do you roast garlic? Very simple, and you should really know how to do this. Take a, um, a fresh uh, head of garlic, rub it with a little olive oil, some salt and pepper, wrap it in some tin foil, and then you want to cook it in the oven for about uh, 45 minutes at a very low temperature, about 200 to 250 degrees. Now, you can also do it on the grill. It's maybe the the uh, the top uh, the top part of the grill where it's, where the where the heat isn't isn't as uh, as high, so you don't burn the garlic. And then, as soon as the garlic comes out, it just sort of squeezes out, makes it nice and sweet. Takes all the bitterness right out of it. How's that fish? This fish is wonderful. I wanted to show you one more time this, this grill that I'm using as a smoker. If you use this grill as a smoker, see how I'm getting smoke off? I've soaked my hickory chips. By soaking my hickory chips, I can put it right on top of my charcoal, and I'm getting a great smoke out of it. Now, today I'm using the hickory chips, and it's almost cooking the fish all the way through. And if you come back in a couple minutes, I'll be happy to show you how the fish looks finished. And we'll plate it, and we'll make a very nice meal out of this fish, Bobby. Yeah, and then what? Welcome back in about two minutes, and then maybe you get to cook some. Oh, good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And we're going to finish this vinaigrette when we come back. Stay with us. You thought Emerald couldn't get any more animated. Bam! Wake up! We put him in front of a live audience. Mm -hmm. ah, give me some. Guys. It's spicy. It's getting hot in here already, isn't it? Unpredictable. I won't even go there. It's the Bam Bam Man, like you've never seen him before. You're not in outer space. It's Emerald Live. If you like your essence shaken, not stirred. Oh, yeah, babe. Kick it up with Emerald Live. Bam! Next, only on the TV Food Network. Hey, now. <laughs> They overcame a lot that summer. Fear of cream spinach, creatures that wriggled. Then she faced her greatest fear, using bleach on a favorite green woobie that just had to match a favorite green dinosaur. Luckily, this new cheer with bleach alternative had something special that didn't just clean, but helped keep that color bright, which brightened their moods when it got dark. Yes, really dark. New cheer when your color's on the line.
With more than $272 billion in sales over the last 25 years, Kodak is the world leader in imaging. Now picture this. More than $1 trillion in real estate transactions makes the Century 21 system number one in real estate. And when you're this big, you can do things others can't, like average a home bought or sold by our customers every minute, every day. No wonder, in a nationwide survey, homeowners chose Century 21 as the leader in real estate by 6 to 1 over the nearest competitor. Call number 1, Century 21. One minute Maalox. The other night I woke up at about 1 a.m. with heartburn. Bad. So I tried this new Mylanta AR. I should have taken Maalox. One minute Maalox. You'll feel it cooling, coating right away. And clinical studies prove Maalox starts to work on stomach acid in about one minute, while Mylanta AR could take over 45 minutes. In the middle of the night, I can't wait that long. I need something I know starts to work fast. I'll stick with one minute Maalox. For heartburn or acid indigestion, count on one minute Maalox. Did you know mosquitoes are attracted to moisture, body heat, and movement? Did you know you can catch poison ivy if unwashed clothing is worn a year after contact? And did you know cortisone 10 penetrates skin to stop the itch and help heal poison ivy and insect bites? Among these, it's the only one with the medicine doctors recommend most to stop itching and help heal. So this summer when you itch, remember the power of 10. Cortisone 10, powerful itch relief for the power to heal. Finishing this fish up. Bobby, you have my vinaigrette finish. You almost done, it? almost done. So All right. Let me re reiterate what I'm doing here. I took some onions, some roasted garlic, some fresh lime juice, some balsamic vinegar, making a vinaigrette. And I'm going to emulsify it in the blender. I'm going to put the olive oil slowly into the blender. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And it's starting to thicken up as, it, as the oil goes in. You don't want to add the oil too quickly because then it will separate and break. Looking good, Jack. All right. Oh, that fish looks great. I've, ta I've filleted this fish, and now you're going to get ready to give me a vinaigrette. We'll pour it, it over to you top, right now. and this is going to be a wonderful dish. Season it with salt and pepper. Okay. And I'm just <laughs> going to pour it straight from the blender. Can I do it? Oh, please. You know that vinaigrette acts uh, not only as a sauce for the fish, but it also okay. helps that spinach that I have laid underneath it. That looks for great. A nice Thank you. Now, uh, you can play with some snapper yourself, aren't you? Yep. But I'm taking the fillets. Ah, the easy way. Well, I don't have that much time to be playing. Okay. So, I went to the fish store and I found some red snapper fillet. If, when you go to the fish market, you want to try to find American snapper. And the reason for that is because you'll know it will be fresher. There is some really good snapper in South America, but it just takes longer for it to get here. So you want to sort of eliminate the days in between the fish is caught and the time that you eat it. So. These are American Reds, and I like to leave the skin on. It ensures, it ensures uh, moisture on the, from the bottom to the top. And it also, I think the presentation is good too. So I'm gonna just season them with salt and pepper on both sides. You got the pepper mill there, Jack? Ah, oh, I'll Thanks. come in handy. Okay. Now this is the dish you serve at Mesa Grill? Yeah, it is. I'm, this is a very unusual dish because it's just not a grilled piece of fish. We're going to use corn husks. Now, these are, these are dried corn husks right from the corn, you know, themselves, and they dry them out. And the great thing about these is that you get a whole lot of these. This is $1.99, okay? So they're really inexpensive. So, um, you know, if, if you lose some of them in the transition, it's okay. Uh, some, of them are, some of them are not big enough. But the ones that aren't big enough, I'm going to show you what to use those for. We soak these in water for about two hours. Now, if you don't have time or if you forgot to soak them, because you need to soak them so that they're very pliable. If you don't have time, you can put them over hot water so they uh, become more pliable quicker. So I've soaked these for a couple hours. And these are pretty good size ones. You can see how they are. And they're nice and pliable now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sort of an overlap. I'm going to put one corn husk here and one corn husk overlapping this one. And then I'm going to take one of the snapper fillets that, I, that uh, I seasoned. Don't forget to season. It's very important. And I'm just going to wrap the corn husk over it. Now, for the, for the, for the corn husks that aren't, that aren't big enough, you're going to make uh, wrappers out of them. You just pull down strips like this. And this is what we're going to tie this with. Pretty fancy, huh, Jack? Pretty fancy. But why do you use a corn husk? Well. 
I like to use the corn husk because, first of all, it's going to keep it really moist, okay. and it also imparts like a little bit of the corn flavor. Ah, a little sweetness. This is a, this is this is the way people used to cook years and years and years ago. A lot of um, Indians from the, from New Mexico and um, and you know around the Southwest, Texas. Okay. It's, it's the way they started cooking a long time ago. All the Native Americans. Okay. So then I'm just going to keep wrapping this like this. We're going to make it like a candy, like a piece of candy almost, like candy wrapper. Okay. And then if you get this problem where it's sort of um, coming up in the middle, just take one and put one right in the middle. Okay. Let's see, get a little, a little bit longer. So it doesn't have to seal perfectly, just so it makes a little basket for you, kind of. Well, you want to seal it pretty good. Okay. Okay, and then the you put the seeds. The corn are strong enough to take the grilling without tearing apart. Yeah, absolutely. They're not gonna. They're not gonna burn. You want to okay. put a little olive oil on them. Okay. Can I? You're doing it. Yeah. Just rub it like this, and then we're gonna go right to our grill. Now this is a fairly new grill. Of course, I like to use gas grills. If you've watched this before, Jack likes to use the. Uh, the old conventional grills where you have to kind of get the charcoal going and he's been showing you some good ways to do that but for me city time i don't like you know i don't have the time i like to season my food heavily a couple of presses of the button boom we have fire 10 minutes later the grill is ready to go 10 to 15 minutes later we're ready to go so what you the great thing about this also is that you can make these all ahead of time so if you have like say six guests you can make six of these wrapped so I had one over here uh, that I wrapped before we started. And also I put two on the grill right before we came on so that I could show you the finished product before, before we went off in the segment. So at this point, I'm just gonna put it right on the grill. You can hear it sizzle immediately. Might as well put this one on too. I'm gonna rub this one with a little. Here, we wanna rub this with a little olive oil? I can do there? that for you. Okay. And as you can see, The, the grill flavor imparts and it holds on to the corn husk so that the, the flavor kind of just sort of seeps in to the snapper, but at the same time, it's protecting the snapper from being really, really, uh, from being dried out and it stays really nice and moist. It's almost like steaming on the grill. Oh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, sir. All right. And when we come back, I'm going to show you how to make a sauce for the snapper. Okay. We're gonna get busy with yours and we're gonna make a little corn and green bean salad. Okay. Sounds good. We'll be back in a moment. Look at us bargain bleaches. We snuck into the Clorox bleach factory. Who'd guess we're bargain bleaches? Because bleach is bleach, right? I, 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 I don't know. I just hope Clorox doesn't put us to the metal test. The metal test? No! Don't be fooled by bargain bleaches. Look at the difference when you pour Clorox bleach and leading bargain bleach through a filter. They leave sediment, metals, and iron. I thought iron was good for you. Oh, shut up. Ow. There's only one Clorox bleach. Hit $250 billion in sales like McDonald's, you're in the Business Hall of Fame. Hit $1 trillion in real estate transactions like the Century 21 system, you're in a class by yourself. You're the number one real estate system. And when you're this big, you can do things others can't, like average a home bought or sold by our customers every minute, every day. No wonder, in a nationwide survey, homeowners said they'd most likely use Century 21 by 4 to 1 over the nearest competitor. So call number one, Century 21. Now, Carnation Instant Breakfast celebrates Disney's Hercules. It's coming to theaters soon. And for a limited time, you can win a vacation to the Walt Disney World Resort to see Hercules. So look for specially marked Carnation Instant Breakfast and get a healthy start packed with vitamins and minerals. You can win your family a Walt Disney World Resort vacation. And just like Hercules, you'll be everyone's hero with Carnation Instant Breakfast from Nestle. Aloha, I'm Chef Gary Strill, along with Chefs John Marie Jocelyn and Stephen Chang. We're here to invite you to a taste of Honolulu. C'est la meilleure chance d'essayer la nourriture des îles. Voilà la mienne. He's right. This year it'll be three days of great food and fine wines. 大家好，我是金龙酒家主厨，欢迎来品尝我们所有美味的食物。
I couldn't agree more. We'll also have live entertainment, plus chef demonstrations. Admission is free, so join us. June 27th, 28th, and 29th for a taste of Honolulu. I taught them everything they know. When you need someone who can handle the job and provide immediate results, check out the Talking Phone Book's Oahu Business Directory's online service. It's your link to the new World Wide Web of Yellow Page Communication. The Talking Phone Book's Oahu Business Directory, leading you into the next century. Welcome back. We got some red snapper and corn husks on the grill. I'm going to take them off right now. There you go. We cooked them for about, about eight minutes total. Somewhere between uh, seven and nine minutes, I would say. Uh, it takes a little bit longer for the fish to cook because they're wrapped in the corn husks. So the corn husks kind of have to pick up the heat. So you want to add another minute for it. And uh, you, the great thing about the corn husks, like I said before, is that it kind of saves you from overcooking them a little bit. If you miss them a little, if you overcook them a little bit, we'll keep, we'll keep them really nice and moist. Okay, now we need a sauce for this. And what I've done is I've taken some fresh orange juice and I've reduced it in a pan to a syrup. If you can see that. And I'm going to put it into a blender. And it's really important that you reduce the orange juice down. We're going to make a we're going to make another vinaigrette. This one is going to be a spicy orange vinaigrette. It's going to be go great with this fish. We're going to add some red onions. A little mustard. Dijon mustard I like. A little fresh garlic. And then some ancho chili powder. Now, if you can't find ancho chili powder, you can use chili powder off the shelf or maybe like a little touch of cayenne or something. You want a little kick to it. But anchos have a great flavor. You know, they're kind of like a spicy raisin. I'm going to put those in. And then I'm going to start blending this. Now, this is also going to be an emulsified vinaigrette. So if you saw in like uh, what I did a couple minutes ago with Jack's mustard vinaigrette for his grouper, you get all the ingredients going except for the olive oil. You keep the blend running, and then you slowly add the olive oil. So this emulsifies it, or thickens it. It keeps it from separating. And it gives it a really great consistency for the fish. Almost there. And you want to put about half olive oil to half of the rest of the ingredients. That should do it. Jack, How much uh, olive oil? Huh? How much about olive? half and half. Half olive oil? Yeah. And half, uh, Half of the rest of the ingredients. A little salt. Can I get the uh, pepper mill? Thank you. You know, on oil and vinegar, Bobby, the ratio is about two parts oil to one part vinegar. So when you're making a salad dressing? Uh, yeah, I like mine a little acidic as well. Okay. I think most of the books say about three to one, but I like mine to be a little acidic. So I'm going to start to plate this now. The vinaigrette's done. You see how quick that was? I mean, just if you have a blender, you can throw all the ingredients in it. Boom, you're done. Now, while you were over there, I made you a little salad. I took some corn, yes. some red pepper, some onion, some green beans, a little lime juice, and some of that vinaigrette you made for me earlier, and mixed it in with green beans. And I made you a little green bean salad go with it. I know you don't like country always, but well, thank you it very works, much. It works but I think well. I think that actually go really well with this dish. And the way to present this dish is to leave it in the corn husk. I mean, presentation is incredibly important, and why not? I mean, this is a fun way to, to serve things, and it makes it really easy. See how that fish goes? Here, smell this. Is that mm. good? Is it corn or is it fish? It's you got a little corn flavor on there. You, you got some corn flavor in it there. It kind of gets that roasted corn uh, flavor into the fish. So we're just going to kind of prop these up a little bit under the corn husks. Okay. Then I'm going to take my vinaigrette. Now, if you want to store this, you can use a squeeze bottle. Uh, squeeze bottles are great for... Um, for storage and service, just kind of put them in the, in the door of your refrigerator. But since we're ready to eat, are you ready to eat? I'm ready to eat. I'm going to put a little of the vinaigrette right over it. And it's great to put the vinaigrette as soon as it comes out, because it's still hot, and uh, you can smell the flavors. Well, I'm Jack McDavid, and you're Bobby Flay. If you want the recipes, they're coming right up. Thank you for grilling and, and chilling with us. <laughs> now we're going to do some chilling ourselves.